Did you know that approximately 25 to 45 percent of the population has hypertension, aka high blood pressure, and that only about 50 percent of you are aware of it? And for those of you that have been flagged by their doctor and are aware of their high blood pressure, you will often notice that it requires multiple medications to bring those numbers down. And even then, the benefits are often modest and can come with some side effects. So we as doctors are constantly looking for other solutions to hypertension. And as a naturopathic doctor, I'm more interested in the question of why is your blood pressure high in the first place? AKA, what is the root cause? What is triggering your high blood pressure? Now, this is why I wanted to talk to you guys today about how to use breath work to lower your blood pressure. One of the reasons this can be helpful is because it helps tap into your nervous system, which a fried overworked nervous system is a very common cause of elevated blood pressure. So I hope by the end of today, you really understand how this very simple tool can have a very profound effect on your blood pressure. Sure, during the time you're doing the breath work, but also after. Now, let me say that again. I am not talking about just a temporary lowering of blood pressure. I'm talking about blood pressure that can remain lower throughout the day just because you have these simple breathwork practices. But before I get into that, I should probably introduce myself. My name is Dr. Robin Lewis. I'm a naturopathic physician practicing in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And today I wanna to talk to you about how breath work can be a useful tool to help lower your blood pressure. One of the first things that I wanted to go over with you is how your breath could possibly be related to your heart, your blood vessels, and consequentially your blood pressure. One of the main reasons has to do with two of our main pressure sensors inside our cardiovascular system. So these are referring to our baroreceptors, one of which is located high in the carotid arteries. It's at your carotid sinuses. So the blood vessels that run up your neck will have one of those pressure sensors. And then the other is located in the left atrium of your heart. So one of the four chambers that exist inside of your heart. Both of those areas are designed to tell the brain what the current pressure is inside your cardiovascular system so that the brain can then either increase or lower your blood pressure based on where you're at. This is helpful for preventing extremes in blood pressure. And those are the two main areas that will send that feedback back to the brain. Interestingly enough, studies have shown that breath work, slow paced breathing, which I will elaborate more on later, has the ability to improve the sensitivity of those baroreceptors. And this can be done in healthy individuals and people on the extreme end, like people with heart failure. So it's very interesting to see that this breath work can have an impact no matter kind of where you are in your stages of heart disease. And the other thing that's important to note about that is the improved sensitivity of these baroreceptors is associated with lower blood pressure. One of the reasons they think this is, is because when you have had hypertension for a while, those baroreceptors kind of get maladapted to a higher set point. So using breath work, we can get the sensitivity of those baroreceptors back to an appropriate level so they can start regulating your blood pressure to a better set point. That's one of the theories. All right, so let me elaborate a little bit more on why this could happen. So when we take a big deep breath in, our chest cavity will expand and what will happen inside that chest cavity is the pressure will drop. Now your heart pressure will drop and the baroreceptors will detect that there is a lower pressure inside the heart and inside the carotid arteries and those cues back to the brain will tell the brain that it needs to increase blood pressure to compensate, to find that equilibrium again. And of course, when you breathe out, everything kind of contracts and the pressure inside that cavity goes way up. And so the opposite will happen. Those baroreceptors will send that cue back to the brain saying blood pressure is too high and you will notice a drop in blood pressure. 
So of course, when we are taking abnormally long breaths, abnormally big breaths, so those swings are a lot more dramatic, the body can detect that. And I really think that's where the magic is, is you're kind of creating these more extreme swings so that those baroreceptors can start to realize that they need to adapt more appropriately. So this is one of the reasons why these practices like breath work can improve the sensitivity of those receptors. It's training those receptors to start responding appropriately again. What's really interesting though, is when you do these practices, you are increasing blood pressure and decreasing blood pressure, but it does seem to have an overall impact of lowering your blood pressure, even though when you breathe in, the blood pressure will actually raise up and you cannot breathe in without breathing out. And so you would think those two would balance out, but the breath work does lead to an overall reduction in your blood pressure. Another reason they believe this to be the case is because this type of practice has been shown to reduce your body's overall sympathetic tone. And so for those of you that don't know what that means, our autonomic nervous system basically has two main modes. It has our sympathetic mode, which is generally referred to as our fight or flight mode, and our parasympathetic mode, which is generally referred to as our rest and digest. So when we are more sympathetic dominant, which is the case in people with hypertension more often than not, the body is in that chronic fight or flight, which has elevated heart rate, elevated blood pressure, more cortisol, more stress, more epinephrine, adrenaline. It's a more stimulated state. And so within that state, you have a higher blood pressure set point. And so anything we can do to balance out that sympathetic and parasympathetic should have a beneficial impact on blood pressure. And yes, they have studied this. An imbalance to that autonomic nervous system is very important for sustained chronic hypertension. A lot of these people are stuck in the sympathetic mode. So breath work is one of the many tools we use to help balance out that autonomic nervous system, to get you more able to rest so that your body can naturally find a lower blood pressure and it spends much less time in that stimulated, high blood pressure, high stress kind of mode. So affecting baroreceptors is one way breath work is helping improve our nervous system. And as a consequence, they have also noticed that breath work will improve something called our HRV, which stands for heart rate variability. I've talked about HRV a lot in the context of burnout, which is often associated with hypertension. But if we look at just hypertension, yeah, the higher our HRV, which typically signifies a healthier nervous system, usually the better the blood pressure. So when they looked at this, they actually did see that breath work has a positive impact on HRV, which is one of the few things we can actually use to more objectively measure the health of our nervous system. A lot of our devices like aura rings, whoop straps, things like that will actually give you a numerical value every single day. So this is something you could actually track and it's something that breath work has been shown to help. So I just wanted to point out that HRV is a good number to track when it comes to blood pressure. So whenever you're reading about essentially anything that's geared towards improving your HRV, you can kind of insinuate that it's likely going to be helpful for blood pressure as well, because a lot of us have fried nervous systems for a lot of different reasons, like chronic stress will lower our HRV, overtraining, so too much exercise or too little exercise will impact our HRV in a negative way, sleep deprivation. There are a lot of things we do to burden our nervous system. And so anything we can do to kind of undo the damage that we accrue over many, many years of this is going to be helpful. And breath work is just one of those tools. So those are kind of some of the main mechanisms 
improving baroreceptor sensitivity, improving HRV. Now let's dive into some of the more concrete examples, some of the studies that look into this. But before I do that, I should briefly give you some context as to what is hypertension. So when I say it lowers it by this much, you have a little bit more context here. So when they talk about hypertension, they will generally break it into stages. And of course, the higher stage of hypertension, the more dangerous the stage, the higher the blood pressure. So you don't technically have stage one hypertension until around 140 to 160 or 159 systolic. So that's referring to the highest pressure when everything is fully contracted, your heart is fully contracted and the pressure is at its highest point. They do not want it to go past 140. In other contexts, in other textbooks or definitions, they will have that set point a little lower at 135. But generally speaking, for sure, if you were at a systolic blood pressure of 140 to 159, that is generally referred to as stage one hypertension. Now there's two measurements when we talk about blood pressure always. There's the systolic, which is referring to the highest pressure. And then there's the diastolic, which is referring to the lowest pressure when everything is fully relaxed. So for stage one hypertension, that is defined at 90 to 99 millimeters of mercury. That's just what they're referring to um, as like a unit they use to measure the pressure is millimeters of mercury. And so 140 over 90 because that's how they present the information typically is the systolic number over the diastolic number would be considered stage one hypertension. And then stage two would be referring to 160 to close to 180 systolic. So it jumps by 20 units. And then the diastolic would be 100 to closer to 110 for stage two. And then stage three is anything where your systolic blood pressure is over 180 or your diastolic is over 110. So this is obviously the most dangerous type of hypertension. If you are getting blood pressure readings that high, you need to go see a doctor. This is a very dangerous level of hypertension, but for most people, they're probably sitting in stages one or two, and there is a little bit more time for implementing some of these more lifestyle-based therapies in addition to or depending on the person, depending on the situation, in replacement of medications. Totally depends on the person. Please talk to your doctor about that. But let's circle back to the studies. So what have they found when it comes to breath work and reducing hypertension? So there are actually a decent number of studies on this, albeit small studies, because this is not a heavily funded topic, but there are studies to show that slow paced breathing can have a beneficial impact. When I say slow paced breathing, that is generally referring to less than 10 breaths per minute, which to compare that to regular breathing, we typically will breathe at a rate closer to 12 to 16 breaths per minute. So 10 breaths per minute is kind of the bare minimum to be considered slow paced breathing. I will say most studies are looking at closer to six breaths per minute, which does make sense. Going from 10 to 12 breaths per minute isn't a very large leap, but going from 12 to six breaths per minute is a more dramatic change in your breathing pattern. So it's likely going to have a more dramatic impact on the body. And so a lot of the good studies that show a beneficial change, a significant change are actually going on the lower end of the slow paced breathing, which is closer to around six breaths per minute. One 2010 study looked at the use of 30 minute breath work sessions where they had the people running through a four second inhale and a six second exhale, taking a break about every six rounds or so, but for 30 minutes straight, they got these participants to do that, which does work out to about six breaths per minute for eight weeks. They did 30 minute breath work exercises two times a day 
for eight weeks and they found really significant changes in these people's blood pressure. And I'm talking about, again, 24 hour changes, not just during the breathwork exercise itself. It was interesting because they were also looking at using a similar breathing pattern under load, which means you're breathing into resistance. And so they did actually use the study to compare using resisted breathing versus completely unresisted. So no devices required, just regular old breathing. And both were actually very positive and the resistance training was more beneficial. But what I got out of that is even with regular breathing, so no fancy devices required, very simple, effective things that you can use at home, will reduce your blood pressure around 10 millimeters of mercury systolic and about five millimeters of mercury diastolic. So at the end of those eight weeks, after doing this daily practice, they reduced their blood pressure by almost 10 points systolic and almost five points diastolic with no other interventions. And then of course, the people using the devices that added resistance and load into the breath actually noticed an even bigger leap. But for those of us who don't have those sort of things, you can still get a benefit. Now you might be thinking, now an hour of my day is quite a lot of time, so don't worry, there were other studies that did look at using breath work to reduce blood pressure, but did not require an hour of your day every single day. For example, another small study looked at the use of even slower breath work, so five breaths per minute, using a guided CD, so a CD that was walking you through the steps of that breath work for 15 minutes a day, again for another eight weeks. And this study was interesting because it was comparing it to just calm music, which also can have a very nervous system relaxing effect. And again, both populations did notice an improvement, but if we're talking about just the breathwork side of things, yeah, these participants were only taking 15 minutes out of their day, and the cycles typically looked at four seconds of breathing in and eight seconds of breathing out which works out to about five breaths per minute. And they showed similar reductions in your diastolic and your systolic. So when we talked about that higher blood pressure point, they noticed around eight millimeters of mercury in reduction. And for diastolic is about four. So very similar with a quarter of the time required. So these are, again, just examples of studies that have looked at this, but it's really interesting to think that you could just take 15 minutes out of your day and it will result in an all day reduction in that blood pressure outside of the actual breath work. For the rest of the day, the blood pressure is lowered by a significant amount. And these studies have really highlighted to me the importance of breath work, the importance of your nervous system when it comes to regulating your blood pressure. Now, these are just two examples of the many studies that I pulled. And I will say there were a couple of themes, which I will reiterate. So it does tend to need a slower breath rate. So those studies that looked at slow paced breathing closer to a 10 breath per minute rate usually didn't show significant results. And like anything, consistency is super important. You're trying to retrain your nervous system. That is not going to happen overnight. So I would really encourage you to participate in this in a long-term setting, a couple months. Don't expect rapid changes within weeks. It has taken you years to develop the blood pressure that you have today. It is not going to take a few days to reverse that. But breath work is one of those free tools that can target one of the main reasons you have high blood pressure, which is a dysregulated nervous system. So I hope that you got some value out of today. I hope this opened your eyes to a new method that you could implement to help your cardiovascular system, but more importantly, your blood pressure. Have yourself a fantastic day. If you have any questions, about the content in today's video, please comment those below. 
And again, I need to reiterate, I cannot answer your direct medical questions, but more broadly speaking, those type of questions I can answer. Thank you, have a good one, and we'll hopefully see you again soon.